What's up guys, it's Ryan here and welcome to this complete guide to solo ambassador for beginners. In this video, we're going to be covering all of the mechanics, all the attacks, a suggested setup, and after that, I'm going to be going through an entire kill in low tier gear. Let's get into it. You can find a table of contents in the description down below. For starters, some information about the ambassador. It's worth noting that although the base hit chance or affinity is 55%, you will have no problems hitting this boss. I had 100% hit chance with a tier 82 Masuda's War Spear and no aura. Because this boss is not immune to poison, Weapon Poison++ plus plus and Cinderbane Gloves are helpful. Here's the gear I'll be using for the video. I'm wearing full bandos, I have Cinderbane Gloves, a Scrimshaw of Vampirism, Twin Fury Blades as well as a Masuda's War Spear, an Asylum Surgeon's Ring, an Amulet of Souls, and a Strength Cape. For this video, I will not be using anything in my Sigil slot, I will not be using any auras, and I also will not be putting anything in my Quiver, including Armor Spikes. In my invent, I've got a Holy Overload, a Replenishment Potion, a couple Super Restorers, a Weapon Poison++, plus plus, a Ring of Vigor, an Excalibur, and the rest of my invent is full of Ceratome and Bruise and Blue Blubber Jellyfish. I also have a Merciless Kite Shield. You're welcome to upgrade and downgrade as much as you'd like, but this is a good set of baseline gear to get your first solo. As for Familiars, I've got a War Tortoise with Bruise and Blue Blubber Jellyfish. Now let's look at the Ambassador. The Ambassador attacks primarily with ranged. Between every five auto attacks, the Ambassador will strike once with melee in melee distance or with magic outside of melee distance. This attack can be resonanced, although you will have to count it for the melee hits. The magic attack has a very long animation, so you should be able to notice it in time and get your switch off. If you don't feel like shield switching, it's not a big deal, and a prayer flick will also help reduce the damage. The Ambassador boss fight can be easily broken down into three phases. The entrance phase, the minion phase, and the smoke phase. The hardest phase by far is the entrance phase, as getting the boss to 550,000 life points can be difficult if not done correctly. I'm going to show you guys how to take it slow and get through that phase without using too many supplies. Once you've made it out of this phase, you're pretty much good to go. This is every mechanic you'll encounter in the entrance phase. Once I read through the mechanics, I'm also going to show you guys each mechanic in slow motion and break it down. Let's start. The first mechanic you'll encounter is a stamina bar. A stamina bar will appear above your head. When this becomes completely empty, smoke will appear under your location. If the smoke is placed while moving, it will cover two 3x3 three three squares. If stationary, it will cover only one. You want to put this smoke somewhere you don't plan on standing at any later point in the fight. The smoke hits very low initially, but standing in it later on in the fight will be lethal. Play smoke will despawn every two cycles. The main strategy here is patience. You want to stop moving, place the smoke in a stationary position so it takes up half the space it normally would, and then proceed with the boss fight. There's not much more to it than that. After that point, you're going to want to try and stay out of the smoke, although if you have to be in it for a short amount of time, it will not one hit you, it will hit you 2000 damage every game tick. Especially if you're using melee, the bladed dive ability is extremely useful. This ability can be used off global cooldown, so it can be used losslessly in between abilities. This means that if you time it correctly, you won't lose very much time and you can get out of melee range to place your smoke safely away from the fight. You can also use the Barge and Surge abilities to get out a little bit further, and that's a good way to go about it too. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter how you go about this phase, Bladed Dive will be a little faster and will definitely help if you're trying to get speedier kills, but so long as you're mindful of where you're placing the smoke, take as long as you need. The second mechanic you're going to encounter in the entrance phase is the Black Hole. After the first smoke attack, the Ambassador is going to spawn a Black Hole. This must be stunned or will hit you for over 7,000 unblockable damage. Stunning the Black Hole will reset the cooldown on your Bladed Dive ability. The general strategy here is simple. Surge, run, or bladed dive to the black hole, hit it with a backhand, forceful backhand, or destroy, but preferably a backhand, and then instantly bladed dive back to the ambassador. If done correctly, you won't lose very much time at all, and it shouldn't pull you away from the fight for much longer than a few seconds. I've done 60 ambassador souls at this point, and I've never seen the black hole spawn in the smoke, so as far as I can tell, that can't happen, although it can spawn very close to the smoke, as you saw there. If that happens, just be a little careful, take your time, work your way around, and eat up just in case. The third and final mechanic of the entrance phase is by far the most challenging. This is the only thing somewhat close to a DPS check, and the only thing that can cause some problems. After a minute and 30 seconds, the ambassador will spawn six spinners and summon three dangerous beams around him. At this point, the ambassador is immune to damage. Standing behind the ambassador will guarantee that a beam doesn't spawn on you. You will move a complete circle around the ambassador and should try and destroy as many spinners as you can. Ultimate abilities like Berserk and Metamorphosis should be used if you're struggling to kill them in time, although this is not necessary. If you've got top end gear and you're using an aura, you're likely able to get the majority of them down with thresholds, although using an ultimate is never a bad idea. Based on your own abilities to deal damage, you need to decide for yourself how many of these you're going to try and take out. With this gear and this setup, I found that the sweet spot was 4, where I would consistently get the first 4 down, and I wouldn't even touch the last 2. Every single one of these spinners that's absorbed will allow the ambassador to do one shockwave attack. There are many different ways to deal with this attack, but this would be my suggestion. 
You want to wait until you see a single auto attack. After you've been hit by it, you're going to instantly use the resonance ability. That'll negate the first attack. After that, I'd recommend switching to a shield and then using reflect or debilitate. This should have you covered for the first, second, and third spinners. If you get four spinners or more, I'd recommend using barricade. You might need it. As soon as you've dealt with the shockwave attacks, you can resume attacking the ambassador, and the phase is going to continue to repeat itself until the ambassador reaches 550,000 life points. Let's take a look again. You're going to notice as I get into this phase that my berserk is still on cooldown for a couple more seconds. Because of this, when the first spinner spawns, I'm going to deal with it with thresholds. You'll notice that I don't end up finishing it off, and that's completely okay. As soon as I'm able to zerk, I'm going to keep moving on. You don't want to end up late for all of them and continually having to surge through the beam, so it's better to move on and move forward. At this point, I'm going to use Berserk. I'm going to clear the second, third, and fourth spinners. At this point, I'm going to go back and revisit the first spinner that I left on low life points. At this point, I make a mistake with my surge, and I end up getting hit by the beam. Taking one tick of damage from the beam will hit you close to 7,000 damage, so it's good to not do what I did here, and that's why I chose this clip. You want to be patient and slow it down. Make sure that you're going somewhere that's completely safe, and as long as you do that, you'll get through this phase no problem at all. Whatever your personal damage output is, whether you're planning on taking out 3, 4, 5, or even all 6 spinners, the goal is to make sure that you're killing them completely. If you get every single spinner to 1 life point, all 6 will still be absorbed and you'll still get 6 shockwave attacks. So it's a lot better to start small and work your way up. As soon as I get hit by the first attack, whether it's a melee, ranged, or magic attack, I'm going to use the resonance ability. That is going to completely block the first shockwave. As for the second one, I elect to use Reflect and Eat Up. This is going to hit me a little bit over 4,000 damage, although this will scale up if you're using a DPS aura. You're also welcome to stack Reflect and Debilitate on top of each other if that's too much damage for you, but the extra damage of the Reflect can be nice, and it saves my Debilitate for something else if I need it later. If you can get the Ambassador to 550,000 life points and you get through this phase, you're home free and you're going to be good to go. Because this is a beginner guide, we're trying to take things slow, low, and make things as simple as possible. That being said, once you're more experienced with the boss, the general strategy is to get to 550,000 life points while only getting a single set of spinners. I'm going to be coming out with a video later on explaining how to do that with all three combat styles. Now for the minion phase. Once the ambassador reaches 550,000 life points, he will summon a set of Crassian minions. These minions attack with weak range attacks and cannot be damaged in any way. These minions hits will interrupt defensive abilities like resonance, so be very careful if you're planning on resing either a melee or a magic attack. You can take advantage of the minions and use the Revenge ability to deal increased damage to your main target. If you're low on food, I'd suggest using Devotion, Debilitate, and or Reflect. Remember that if you're using Reflect, you should use Revenge at the same time to minimize the DPS loss. At this point, you're just staying alive. Some of the mechanics can be repeated from the first phase, such as the black holes and the smokes, but ultimately, you can play this as fast or as slow as you'd like to, and nothing fancy happens. The longer you take, the more Crassians will spawn, and you will take slightly more damage. When you get the ambassador to 400,000 life points, Seria will arrive and heal you to full life points and defeat the minions for you. Because of this, when you get close to the end of the phase, you want to let your life points be nice and low so that Seryu can give you more life points back. This middle phase is kind of like a break. It's very simple, it's very straightforward, and there's not too much bad that can happen. The final phase, on the other hand, can get quite difficult. Let's break it down in slow-mo. During this phase, a black hand will slap the ground. When this happens, you must position yourself between the hand and the ambassador. Doing this will create black smoke that will hit you for low damage. This black smoke can interrupt some defensive abilities like resonance. If you're standing in the incorrect location, white smoke will be released, and each white smoke released will heal the ambassador by 2500 damage. The position will rotate clockwise, and so long as you move at the right speed, this phase will be very simple. Especially on release, people seem to think that this was some kind of DPS check phase, and that you had to out-DPS the healing. This is incorrect, and DPS is much less important than dealing with the heals and making sure that you're negating it as much as possible. So long as you don't let the boss heal, you could literally finish this entire phase without using a single ability. You could just stand there and auto-attack. Wouldn't be the best idea, wouldn't be the fastest idea, but if you position yourself correctly, there is no healing. Now comes the second aspect of this phase. Every 30 seconds, your screen will turn red and you'll be hit by 5 magic attacks in rapid succession. Each attack will hit you for 8,000 damage. To avoid this, rotate Devotion with Deflect Magic and Reflect plus Debilitate also with Deflect Magic. Devotion has a 60 second cooldown, so you can use it as an indicator of when the next red phase will begin. You'll be able to Devotion every second phase, and whenever Devotion is on 30 seconds cooldown, you're going to want to make sure you've got Adrenaline for both Reflect and Debilitate. This last phase is really just about not panicking. So long as you're moving in a clockwards direction at the right pace, and you're dealing small amounts of damage to the boss, you will reach the end of the boss fight. You just need to make sure you don't make a mistake on any of the red phases. Here are some tips. 
If you're planning on going through a Berserk rotation, which I would strongly suggest, it's good to use Berserk as soon as a red phase has ended. This means that you'll have the maximum time to get through your Berserk rotation as well as build adrenaline. If you use an ultimate ability like Berserk right before the red phase starts, you're going to have a really bad time and you could end up dying. One other thing that I intentionally didn't include in this sample kill is Resonance. You're welcome to Resonance any of the five magic hit splats, and each one Resonance will get you all the way up to full life points. You need to be very careful that the black smoke doesn't snipe your resonance, and I'd recommend walking out of the heal path for a short amount of time. It's a very good strategy, and it's something that's worth learning, but it's absolutely not needed when you're going for your first kills. If you've got the food and you've got the supplies, it's not a big deal. As soon as you want to switch to using a familiar like a Steel Titan or a Talon Beast, it becomes a lot more useful. Outside of that, there's nothing to it. You want to keep going around, you don't want to panic, you want to stay patient, and you'll notice that the Ambassador's life points are getting lower and lower and lower, and the heal is almost completely insignificant. So, there's a lot going on with this boss fight, there are a lot of things to look out for, but hopefully after that breakdown, it makes a little more sense, and it looks like something that isn't so intimidating. I'm now going to take you through a full Ambassador solo and explain what I'm doing. This is by no means a perfect kill, but it is a kill that worked out, where I ended with a good amount of food left at the end. When you're ready to start the ambassador fight, simply run into the room. You're going to start by flicking your magic protect as the very first attack will be a blue magic attack. After that, you can pretty well camp pre range for the rest of it. If you want to flick melee for the melee hits, you're going to have to count them yourself, and this is something that I found not particularly necessary with this setup. As you can see, we're depositing the smokes, and I'm going to the black holes to stun them. It doesn't really matter how fancy your DPS rotations are, I was doing a berserk rotation at the start of each cycle because my adrenaline pot was off cooldown, but it's not the end of the world. You can take this as fast or as slow as you'd like to, the important thing is to make sure to not mess up the mechanics. For the most part on this first phase, the mechanics get messed up when you get greedy for DPS. If you wait too long before depositing your smoke, you'll end up with a bunch of smokes in melee distance and you'll have trouble attacking. The exact same goes for the spinner phase. You don't want to get greedy and try and finish off a spinner as the beam is about to hit you. You want to get the heck out of there and play it safe. You can go back afterwards if you need to, or simply deal with the extra shadow attacks once the phase is over. You may have also noticed that my weapon poison was extremely effective on the spinners, and that's why I'd recommend bringing it. It's something you can put in your invent that can help you finish them off in time. In this cycle, I ended up with two absorbed spinners. At this point, I'm dealing with it exactly as I showed when I broke it down. I'm going to resonance the first one, and I'm electing to reflect the second one. I choose not to use debilitate, as it's a waste of adrenaline, and my food situation is looking pretty good. At this point, it's just a complete repeat of what we did earlier. The important thing is that I don't make a mistake. I'm going to speed things up until we get into the next phase. The trick here is really consistency, and consistency comes with practice. If you're noticing that I'm doing some things pretty well tick perfect, that's simply because I've practiced this boss a lot. If you're messing it up like I did just there and putting the smoke in a bad spot frequently, that just means you need a little more practice, and it's definitely no means to give up on the boss fight. At this point we're doing the spinner phase, and you are going to see that there is a smoke in melee distance that I need to be very mindful of. As you can see, I choose to attack the boss from the opposite side and make sure I don't accidentally run into that smoke. I'm dealing with the absorbed spinners, and it's a complete repeat of everything before. Anytime a blue magic attack is coming towards me, I'm either going to use resonance or I'm going to flick my deflect magic, although just keeping my life points high is something I also did here to play it extra safe. At this point, we're into the spinners for the third time. You're also going to notice as I go through the spinners here that I have placed my smoke very carefully as to not put the smoke inside of the spinners. This can happen, and that's why it's good to have something like a Masuda's War Spear to be able to attack it from slightly further out. Overall though, be mindful of where you're putting the smokes and you shouldn't run into too many problems. As you can see, we've hit 550,000 life points, so it's time to hit the minion phase. There's not a whole lot to add here other than mentioning for the third time how useful using revenge can be here. This can be especially good if you're using a defender, as a defender will allow you access to both dual wield abilities as well as defensives. So you could do a revenge, a reflect, and then still use abilities like destroy, havoc, or flurry that would normally require a melee offhand. You can tell in the clip that I'm not worrying too much about my damage output here. I'm just trying to handle the minions, stand in place, and get it to 400k. This isn't a speed kill, and there's no need to make a mistake rushing things here. It's very straightforward so long as you take it slow, and be mindful of what defensives you have. Now that we're at 400k, it's time to enter the final phase. Seryu is going to chuck me some life points, and then I'm going to go through a Berserk rotation. At this point, there's still no need to rush, but that's a great opportunity to go through a full Berserk rotation before the red phase. The very first time your screen goes red, you do not need to use a defensive like Devotion, Reflect, or Debilitate. It's just to show you how the phase works, so there's no need to do anything there. 
And at this point, we're simply following the clockwise pattern with the hands. You're going to notice a couple white smokes coming through as my positioning was not completely perfect. And that's completely natural. So long as you're making progress and you're blocking the majority of the heels, you should be fine. That was my first devotion there, and now we're just going through a berserk rotation. I'm being very mindful of my Devo cooldown because as soon as it's 30 seconds, I need to be able to use some defensives as soon as possible. You're also going to notice a couple times here that I elect not to use Debilitate. And this is intentional to get extra reflect damage on the boss. Only do this if you have a ton of food left and a ton of life points as well. It's not worth it when you're just learning and it's definitely not something that you need to get into. But if you've got extra food at the end of the kill, it's a good way to burn that food and turn it into DPS. Now I'm going to talk about using other combat styles. If you're using magic or ranged, you can walk underneath the ambassador and use an ultimate like death swiftness or sunshine directly underneath. This will allow you a full 360 degrees range of motion to allow you to continue blocking all of the heals while DPSing in melee distance. This is what I'd strongly recommend doing if you choose to use one of those other combat styles. I've one cycled the ambassador with all three, so you can't really go wrong, it completely comes down to personal preference. I decided to make this guide with melee, as in my opinion melee is the easiest combat style for learning, but if you don't have melee gear, feel free to give it a crack with something else. Melee gives you very good mobility with things like the bladed dive ability, and also gives you a good heal over time with the scrimshot of vampirism. This lets you be a little more patient and worry a little bit less about the food situation. On top of that, this boss fight is pretty well designed to be done in melee distance, so to me, it just made sense. As you can see on screen, we're still going around and around and around, and we're going to slowly cruise ourselves to a just over 11 minute long kill. This is by no means a speedy kill time, but it's very consistent and you'll see plenty of food left in my invent. You'll also notice that I'm not using a tier 99 prayer, I'm not using a pack yak, and my gear is pretty bare bones as well. So long as you don't panic and you're willing to put in a little bit of time to practice, you should have this boss down no problem at all. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out a lot. Outside of that, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them in the description box down below. Feel free to click on screen to check out some of my other uploads. And as always, have a good one. Peace out. That's it from me. As I mentioned earlier, my guide to one cycling the ambassador with all three combat styles will be out soon.